A survey conducted by Finder.com in 2021 revealed that Nigeria ranked sixth among 20 countries in the world that have adopted non-fungible tokens NFTs. The reason for this is not far-fetched. As a result of the continued devaluation of the Naira, Nigerians are constantly on the lookout for new ways to stay above inflation. One of such ways appears to be delving into the acquisition and sale of digital assets, NFTs. Now, given the rapid growth of the NFT ecosystem in Nigeria, what do Nigerians need to know and how can they be protected? Welcome to Business Insights and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. What Nigeria faces increasingly in 2022 is crippling stagflation, that is, low economic growth coupled with high inflation. The signs are already there for all to see. For this week, let's take a look at stories which made headlines in the world of business in Nigeria. The National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, says Nigerians spent more on transportation in March. According to the report, the average fare for a single journey one-way ticket by air passengers increased by 4.43% monthly from 44,825 Naira in February to 46,810 Naira in March. This report covered various categories, bus journey within the city per drop constant route, bus journey into city, state routes, charge per person, airfare change for specified routes single journey, journey by motorcycle per drop, and waterway passenger transport. The report stated that airfare rose by 28.26% year-on-year to 36,495 Naira from March last year. <music> Governor Babajide Songwolu revealed that work on the Blue Line Rail project was at 90% completion. It said that the state government is on track at completing work on both the blue and rail lines rail projects, which are intercity, to strengthen the intermodal transportation system. According to him, contractors are working seven days a week so that residents will ride trains on the rail by the first quarter of 2023. It said that the blue line rail would be running on electric trucks with electric motor vehicle, EMV, and therefore warned the resident to keep off the train lines and ensure they don't walk on it. <music> Bakers under the aegis of the Premium Bread Makers Association of Nigeria said they would increase the price of bread. The president of the association, Emmanuel Onora, said the increase became inevitable due to soaring cost of productions. This increment is across all variants. The federal government has concluded plans to initiate a new program called Investing in Digital and Creative Enterprises with over $600 million commitment to support young people engaging in skills development. National Coordinator of Social Investment Program, Humar Binder, revealed this at the 5th National Tourism Transportation Summit and Expo in Abuja, saying the program is aimed at training youth through several skills acquisitions. Binder also urged the youth to grab the opportunity with all sense of commitment and steadfastness for the overall good of the country in its march to industrial and economic greatness. Now those were the stories that made headlines this week. Moving on, despite the growth of NFT among Nigerians, it remains a novel concept a large number of the population are still unaware of its operations. Also, the government is yet to provide an elaborate and uniform regulation to guide its usage in Nigeria. Rumer Dominic is a certified blockchain architect and cryptocurrency expert. He is also an executive member of the Stakeholders in Blockchain Association of Nigeria, CBAN. He is the MD CEO of Verm Nigeria Company. He joins us now to share insights on this conversation. Thank you for joining us, Rumi Dominic. Thank you very much. Okay, let's talk about this uh, particular development, uh, which is, uh, you know, the NFTs. Uh, what do we really need to know as a people? It is a bit novel in Nigeria, you know, are there risks involved? 
Yes, of course. <laughs> There are major risks associated with this particular NFT space. And the truth is, NFT is, is the latest digital trend and it is rapidly gaining attention in Africa's largest economy. It is a non fungible token that is unique and um, it is non interchangeable units of data in the sense that, like the Naira notes you have, you, there are so many people that have that Naira notes on the street. Um, take, for example, the Bitcoin as a currency, which is a digital asset, there are a lot of people that have that particular Bitcoin, and that particular Bitcoin can be split into smaller units. But in the case of NFTs, we are trying to define something that no other person has. So if you look at this particular two use case that I just made mention of, these two different classes of um, items, people have them, but for NFTs, it is just one of that particular item and just one that is available and cannot be split into smaller words, smaller units. So let's take, for example, you have customized cars and maybe they make only seven in the world. You can definitely say that those particular type of cars are things that you cannot find in any other place around the world. So those particular type of items becomes non-fungible, which means they cannot be recreated easily. Just like this particular moment that we are having, we might never have this particular type of moment anytime again. So it can also be a real life experience, just like we have on this particular call. And at this particular time now, we are sharing different experiences together. The recording of this particular experience becomes an NFT-like what item. So you can upload this particular thing. And if I have a large following, you have a large following, someone that is emotionally attached to this particular recording can now say hi i love this particular content i love this particular art i want to own it digitally and be the only one that can own it and then be able to monetize it which means that if that person makes an offer and then you sell the intellectual property to that person it becomes a non-fungible intellectual property so it actually transcends across both owning digital art applying your intellectual property and being able to to also feel, apply emotions to which are moments that are captured as NFTs. All right, Dominic, let's uh, try and bring it closer home. When you talk of NFTs, uh, what, come, uh, what comes to mind is more of uh, you know, intellectual property, uh, the art, uh, maybe the entertainment. You know? But in Nigeria, we still have um, issues of uh, copywriting and other laws associated with it. How do we bring all of that to the picture? Okay, so with the issue of copywriting, um, you know, one of the properties of the blockchain is the fact that it is immutable, right? Which means that whatever is placed on the blockchain cannot be altered. And what is the reason for this particular um, copywriting? People try to take things and alter and change data and try to put one or two things. So for the in the case of copywriting, what we can see is once artists now start um, putting their work on the blockchain, making them NFTs, they can be able to have a control in the sense of the demand and supply. You know, one of the major reasons that accounts for the continuous price increase in other digital assets is the supply and demand was the supply and demand factor. So once they put it on this particular blockchain, you can ask, okay, I want to have only 50,000 copies of this particular type of art, this particular type of music, just like we have, we have seen the Taylor Swift and all of those um, other global artists do. They want to have 50,000 copies of this song as an NFT um, asset on the blockchain. And we're only going to sell that. And you cannot find that anywhere else in the world. The artist is also able to continually earn royalties on the sale of those particular words, NFT. So right now, there are, there's a high possibility that if you make your music, you put it in the labor market, maybe when Mama OK is done or Papa John is done, they might not come and give you royalties maybe because they actually dubbed that particular word, that particular song or that particular content. But with NFTs and them being on the blockchain, you continue to earn royalties for life and it cannot be duplicated. You see, digital as it is, there is only one particular technology that curbs what is called double spending, which means that you whatever is sent to you cannot be retained by the other party that is sending it. So that's one of the things that can actually make NFTs to be able to curb that particular problem of copywriting. 
All right. Uh, right now, there seems to be a very huge demand, a huge market for NFTs, not just in Nigeria or Africa as it is really evolving, but also around the world. Uh, tell us more about um, demand and supply risk. Uh, you know, for when you talk about currencies in Nigeria, we talk about devaluation. But for NFTs, really, the idea risk of uh, maybe uh, it coming down in value or any of that. Hey. Yes, um, just like with every economy, every asset, there are always risks associated with it. Now, the in currency, okay, there are a couple of things the average Nigerian needs to know actually before you get into NFT. You need to have a little knowledge of cryptocurrencies and have a little knowledge of DeFi. And then you use these cryptocurrencies, which is now the currency of the internet, to work to purchase these NFTs, right? And when you use these particular um, currencies to purchase these NFT, the thing is, is these currencies, some of them are liquid across a lot of markets. But when you purchase these NFTs, there are some challenges in, in the sense that some of these NFTs, maybe you cannot sell them anymore. In the sense that the marketplace, after buying that particular NFT, there is no strong utility for that particular NFT. And the marketplace to be able to sell it is now not available. Well, you use the digital currency to buy it, right? Your hope is that after buying it with that digital currency, you might be able to exchange that NFT for another value. But in this case now, you are unable to do that. So that now defeats what the liquidity of that particular NFT. So that's one major challenge that is affected with the liquidity uh, around the NFT after using the digital currencies to what? To buy it. I would like you to repeat the part B of your question so that we tackle it head on. Okay. You will agree with me that uh, NFTs are relatively new in Nigeria. And when it comes to regulation, uh, the CBN is quick to wage in its uh, you know, sledgehammer on things like that when it comes to digital assets. The case of cryptocurrency is one that is still very fresh on our minds. Don't you think we should be looking at the uh, direction of a regulation so Nigerians can actually you know, be prepared and actually be protected as it were? Actually, in terms of regulation, I would say yes, we should be looking at um, regulatory policies to be able to ensure that we have a safe marketplace for the NFT users in Nigeria. You see, Nigeria, some of the statistics that came to my table as one of the executive members of C-Bank saw that Nigerians, we are about 13.7% of Nigerians using the interacting with the NFT world, much more than about the global population, which we are having into the average of the global population, which is about 10.7%, which means that the marketplace for the global marketplace of the world for NFTs, we have majority of them in Nigeria. So why would I say no to regulation coming into this particular market space? I mean, we have over about 20, about 169 billion dollars locked in part in total valuation of this particular digital asset. And we see that Nigerian art creators are using NFTs to leverage the shift of art to the digital world. Because that's why the government cracked down on cryptocurrency. They are increasing their net worth while at it. Nigerian regulators will continue to, to devise policies that will keep up with the technology. And we see that that's why the lack of regulation. In, in 2018, we saw one of Nigerian's uh, prominent artists, Jason Igwe. He, he submitted his work, he presented his work during the 2018 Ethereum Blockchain Summit. And during the COVID period, he sold some of those NFTs because he had already learned how to mint some of those NFTs. And he sold them for a huge amount of money. We also see a lot of other Nigerians like them, like Grey Shadow. We also see Nigerians like Odion Tobi. Um, they are making so much, so much, so much waves in the NFT world without this regulation. And you see that Nigerians are using it to end foreign um, income into foreign exchange into the country. And they are using it to interact with global finance. So regulation should come and quickly address some of the challenges that we are having. Some of the challenges that we are having, especially with the marketplace, with the liquidity that is around the NFTs. And then some NFTs that have perceived value. When I say perceived value, in the sense that an influencer can talk about an NFT, because 
One of the challenges too is that the skill set around understanding this particular concept is not also available in the country. So an influencer can come talk about an NFT and people might have a perceived value on it. And meanwhile, that particular NFT does not have utility, does not have a roadmap, does not have where it is going to. And then Nigerians would ape in, which means they will buy in, and then maybe they will lose their money what, in the process because they will not be able to what? So I mean exchange that NFT for value. And what do you call an asset? An asset is anything that has a lot of liquidity around it, which means if you have an NFT that you are classifying as a digital asset, you want to also quickly liquidate that particular digital asset to, what? to cash. And since you cannot do it, you might not be blaming the regulators or the government for not putting in enough policies to, to be able to ensure that they safeguarded your money while you are trying to do it. Another thing that this regulation will try to do is to open up the, the, the market space for Nigerians. You know, currently we have like the dollar exchange, I think $20 per month, right? Or, or there about some, some banks, less than $20. There are NFTs that are worth $1,000, $300, $500,000, $500, $500. So how then do you want Nigerians to be part of this global economy with the limitation in bottleneck of payment? then Nigerians will be missing out of it. Then Nigerians cannot join the third world, uh, this particular um, first world countries in the terms of technological revolution that is going on with, with NFTs. And then, well, this regulation will ensure that they increase the limits for Nigerians to be able to spend FX and be able to get access to, what, to the best digital collectibles in the world. So. Um, I think regulation should come in quickly to be able to address all of these things that can actually make Nigeria, which is a giant of Africa, to start taking a back seat in this large technological revolution. All right, uh, so let's talk about the future of all of this now, NFTs and blockchain. It seems to be gaining a whole lot of momentum at such a rapid space in Nigeria. So uh, do you see... Uh, this particular technology, this digital asset uh, becoming the order of the day or the main uh, currency the Nigerians uh, will be trading on over time? Yes, of course. Um, the, you know, like I said, one of the go-to go places, right? Um, one of the major challenges is the fact that Nigerians don't have a skill set for a go-to place to be able to learn about this to now ensure that we keep attracting a lot of foreign revenue that is coming into the country now from these different technological interactions. So the future actually holds a lot of um, bright hope for us. Um, as you know, I'm an author in this particular technological um, space or in this particular niche. One of the go-to go place to really learn about all of this is Vrem.co, which at that particular Vrem.co, you see a lot of, we, are, we have about 20 blockchain, 20 different blockchain courses with about one and seven different modules that addresses this particular skill set. Takes you from one step to another to now see that the future we are talking about is one that is mastered by Nigerians and one that we are able to have enough engineers, enough blockchain tech um, savvy people that can actually interact with the tech, develop business solution, ensure that we have good use cases. Let's take, for example, now, NFTs are, NFTs are unique identities, right? Let's say we want to take NFTs to start solving, the, um, to start solving like ticketing problems in Nigeria. You know, in Nigeria, you have uh, fake tickets that they sell in some of these concerts. So for the artists, they can say, like, a video can say, I'm issuing out, instead of meeting, he wants to sell 10,000 tickets for maybe one particular arena. You issue out VIP tickets for your NFT. Maybe you issue out 2,000 VIP NFTs. You issue out 3,000 VIP um, less of that particular one. And then all of them are tied to the blockchain. Whenever they get to the, your event hall, they show their NFT. They know that this person is a VIP, this person is entitled to this, this person is entitled to that. And this is the future in terms of what? Ensuring that people do not counterfeit this particular and uh, forge, forge things on the internet. Then let's talk about digital identity or let's talk about um, um, the fact that this NFT, if you, if one of the future of it is that some of these particular um, NFTs can give you access to specific communities that will now 
Okay, so before some people used to be part of some Rotary clubs, shell clubs, and all of those things. Now, this particular different, this particular centralized organization before, they can grow into decentralized autonomous organization, and they can start using NFTs to be able to manage those particular um, access points. So you have your community, you issue them out some NFTs, and then only people that have those NFTs, it's not like the key of the internet. So only people that have those things can access some special rights. Let's say, um, like for a station now, I for me to gain some special access to maybe um, discount on adverts, uh, maybe discount on one or two programs that you air. All right. Maybe you guys did 100 NFTs at a point in time and you gave it to your top um, 10 tech guys. And you say this top 10, 10 guys, from every dividend that this company will earn, or whatever value they keep putting in this company, they will keep earning something. And as far as we have those NFTs, we will become shareholders and value. All right, Dominic. All right, Dominic, we must say a very big thank you for, uh, to you for joining us. Let me take that again. All right, Dominic, we must say a very big thank you to you for joining us uh, to share all of the insights concerning NFTs. It is actually a very wide uh, you know, uh, topic uh, of discussion, and uh, we must uh, have to bring you back to you know, throw more light uh, in future. Thank you once again, Dominic uh, Rume is uh, the certified blockchain architect, and he joined us on the show today. Thank you yet again. Right. Thank you for having me. Have a nice day. All right. Away from all of that, the president of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, Iken Comfort Eyitayo, says the body will continue to educate members with relevant trainings, skills, and technology to meet up with the evolving global trends. Eyitayo said this on the sideline of her official visit to the Lagos and District Society. Details in this package. Members of the Lagos and District Society welcomed their 57th president to Odida. Although the gathering is a relaxed one, issues affecting the accountancy profession take center stage. Top on the front burner is the relevance of accountants joining the profession and their lack of employability. However, all hope is not lost. The icon boss, flanked by other executives, hints of a silver lining. We are establishing ICANN Academy, for instance, where we can also put them through the necessary training, the, apart from their own professional continuous training. Then we also have an entrepreneurship uh, initiative, which we have started already. The aspect of that is to also, those who want to go into practice, to make them see what it looks like teach them the business aspect uh, uh, as well as the skill aspect. So most of them that know is because that the students, I mean, ICANN is one of the most difficult exams. People think they pass, to pass. So when he said about the past ICANN, ICANN examination, he's so happy because he knows the rigor of the examination processes. Now, transferring that same zeal and the, what you have acquired into the field is not the challenge ICANN is having. Now, these may not be the best of times for the profession, as accountants are being challenged, not only by the harsh economic circumstances of the nation, but also by pieces of regulations. They speak of how gaps in the company and Allied Matters Act camera affect their practice. The guiding rules of, of members of the Institute of Canada and Account are accuracy and integrity. In, in natural sense, accountants, that is what is sought, is meant to defend the both the profession and the organization it works for safeguard its assets and ensure that the resources of the organizations are safeguarded. Now some of the jobs that are supposed to be done by accountants, for instance, uh, some of the provisions that talks about if your turnover is below 25 million, you are not supposed to pay tax. Good, 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 very good uh, provision, I mean to be, to be tax friendly to, the, to businesses. But now that means if you're not going to pay tax, that you don't prepare an account. The ICANN president also condemned the continuous disregard for professionals in the civil service recruitment process. And that's the size of the show. Our business Insight returns same time next week. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching.